I'd like to take you through a little bit of a review of kind of where we've been on this bot journey. Um, for me, it all started out in the summer of 2023 when I started to do some modeling on the RoboTaxi network. That caught the attention for whatever reason of James Delma. And James um, made a, uh, a comment on my post and Elon responded to that. There's actually a, an image of that, uh, just a couple of slides in. Probably the mm -hmm. best uh indirect compliment anybody had ever given me yeah and elon said you understand but few do now he was referring to james he was replying to james Delma, not not me <laughs> okay right but but yeah. james james was highlighting my work mm. in the model so it was an indirect compliment for me um and so this actually kind of spurred me on right if if elon is sort of saying that you know okay you know if it's just a few people understand this and i was sort of intrigued to go a little bit deeper and so I went beyond RoboTaxi into humanoid bots, which most people at that time thought was just a little bit of a you know science project for Tesla. Mm -hmm. And I quickly discovered um, that this was actually going to be the opportunity for Tesla. So if we actually just go back one slide that we skipped over there, when I think about what is a humanoid robot, obviously it's a machine, right? It can do work tirelessly. It, it'll work as long as the battery lasts and it will it'll plug itself in and charge back up and work over and over again. It's also a form of labor. It will be able to do any work that a human can do. It's not there yet, but that's the, the, the direction that we're headed with humanoid robots. And for the first time in human history, we will have a form of labor that can outcompete humans. We've never had that before. We've certainly had specialized machines that can do things faster and more, you know, consistently than, than humans can, but not just a general labor device. And then of course, it's much more than just a machine and labor. It's a computing device. It can be packed with environmental sensors. It can speak any language. It can communicate with, you know, everyone and anything. And by speaking languages, it's also the language of chemistry and biology, computer science. It's not just, you know, English, French, and Spanish. Um, it's all the languages. Math, for example, is essentially a language. And then for humans, this is probably the most important one, I think, for how the bots will impact us going forward in terms of our interaction with them. Bots will become our tutors, our coaches, our guides, right? They'll essentially be patient educators um, and help us solve problems. And I think this is where most of the interaction with humans and humanoid bots will come in. And then, of course, uh, as caregivers and companions, this is also absolutely massive. To be able to have something that's a 24-7 assistant for whether it's... Uh, you know, a child, an adult, or an elderly person. This is a game changer for humanity. And then beyond that, it's a, it's a vessel of humanity's intelligence. The humanoid bot will have access to the collective intelligence of the world. And we've never had a device like that before. So I, I find it hard to overstate how important the humanoid robot is. I love the way that you get, made that list because uh, there's several items that a few are actually talking about, right? The companionship, that alone could be incredibly important. The access to human intelligence, the, the world's collection of human intelligence at any point in time, all of that has tremendous value. Yeah, and that's, that's AI in a nutshell, but this is an embodied yeah. form of AI. So right. This will have, you know, the a physical representation of that. You're not just talking into a device and that that'll be very different. And of course it can respond back to you in ways that you want it to respond back. I was just going to, people are underestimating how quickly humans will assume and uh, treat these, you, these bots as friends. Yes. We, we've already seen how people will give names to, uh, the Roombas and they, and once they start interacting with you, no matter what form they look like, as long as they have a little eye or two, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there may be a ways to go there in terms of making the robots maybe more approachable for humans. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how that develops. Uh, some people say, you know, we need to make sure the robots look like robots. And the way you always are very clear that a robot is a robot. Don't make mm -hmm. it too human-like. Anyway, we'll see how that develops. 
So Elon's sort of indirect compliment spurred me on to sort of try to figure out what the potential value of Tesla's Optimus robot is. So we'll just kind of take you on a little journey here. Um, we, we looked at, you know, how large of a market opportunity this is, and we compared it to the oil industry. And this is just numbers for the Western world. And the oil industry and in revenue per day is about a nine, um, sorry, yeah, about a nine trillion dollar, um, a nine billion dollar market per per day in terms of oil industry revenue. And when we looked at the labor market in the Western world, with about half a billion workers earning an average of one hundred sixty four dollars a day, that's eighty two billion dollars a day. So the labor market is about nine to ten times larger than the oil industry. And I think most of us sort of intuitively understand how big the oil industry is, but the labor market is an order of magnitude above that. So here we are developing something that can compete with human labor. Of course, it's going to be absolutely massive, right? At least over time, not, not initially, it's going to take some time, but it's going to get there probably fairly quickly. And then we set out to figure out what the advantages of humanoid robots were. And the list is so large that not everything fits on this page. Mm -hmm. Every time we show this and talk about this, we get many comments from people saying, you forgot this, you forgot that. Yes, yes, we did. There's a lot more <laughs> advantages of a humanoid robot over human workers. There's, the list is, is almost endless. Now, initially, humans are better at humanoid robots at all kinds of tasks. That is true today. But make no mistake about it, the humanoids are catching up fast. Yeah. The, the, even today, uh, when I have conversations with people, they still don't, they can't grasp uh, how, what, why do you even need a human or robot? Look at, look at some of the uh, debates that we're having on X with Tesla Q, people who are um, you know, bearish on Tesla. And they'll say, there's no need for a human or robot. Don't you see? There's already these industrial robots out there. They can do mm -hmm. the job. They're not understanding um, what we are seeing. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like saying there's no need for humans. Well, there is. Humans <laughs> do work. Exactly. Right. So if you make a machine that does the work of a human, then there is a need for that because there are billions of humans employed every day. Yeah. So from there, we, we sort of explored, you know, where, where some of the opportunities might be. And certainly initially, it's very clear that there's a global labor shortage in manufacturing, in warehousing, in different areas, right? And there's different estimates for how large of a problem this is. But it is very clear that with the demographic declines in the world, that there is going to be an increasing shortage of, of, of work, of workers. And so this is a natural void in which humanoid labor can fill. And so initially, no one really has to lose their job in order for humanoids to make an impact on the world. And so a lot of people go to this issue first and they say, well, people are going to lose their jobs. How is this going to work? Well, it's true of any technology. People have lost their jobs and the world has moved on and people have gone on to, to do different things. A long time ago, most people used to work in the, in the, in the fields and today very few people do. And yet we have fair, an abundance yeah. of foods. To be fair, this is going to, as you just said at the beginning though, right? It can do any job much better than many advantages. Yep. It will replace humans. Uh, we do need to be considering what's going to happen to humanity in the future. But you're saying that at the very beginning, you know, maybe the next year, two, three years, uh, this will impact people yet, <laughs> but we yep. better start thinking about it. No, you're right. And we, we have a little bit of time, but not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So then we took, took a look at the economics of a humanoid robot and what that might look like. And this was just a chart that I had put together in terms of the cost of a humanoid Tesla's Optimus bot or any other humanoid potentially versus human labor. And if you recall, I measured the capacity of what the bot's skills were based on what you would pay a human to do those tasks for. So I looked at $5 an hour work. I looked at $10 an hour work, 15, 20, 30, 40. Mm -hmm. And human workers are paid those wage rates, but there's also additional costs over and above the hourly rate. 
so that's those numbers in the in the in the, in the white bars or so the white outline bars. So if you pay a human fifteen dollars or ten dollars an hour, the effective labor cost is more like fourteen or twenty two dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So you could you could the cost of a humanoid robot is going to be far less, and that's that's very easy to show. And then from there we looked at you know what the potential profitability might look like for Tesla or other humanoid robot makers at those different wage levels. And again, that's a proxy for the bot's capability. So if the bot is only able to pick up a box and move it, then there's only a certain amount of revenue and a certain amount of profit that you could get from that, from that type of work. But as the bot moves up that capability curve, employers should be willing to pay more and more for that kind of ability. And so if a bot can do $40 an hour work, then the profit potential for Tesla or another humanoid robot maker could be $60,000 a year. Yeah, this is a very interesting um, debate and analysis we need to work through. Uh, people like you uh, and others are saying that when you price, what, what price would a bot maker sell their bot to customers? It's market driven. It's based on what they're paying currently today to humans. And if they're paying them $40, in fact, you just wrote how much more, they would be paying, willing to pay $60,000 a year for this if they can get them, you know, it's it's like a third the cost. Others yeah, it's think, actually more than, it's more than 60. This is the profit to Tesla. This is after all the right. costs. This so is the, the profit to Tesla, 60,000. But others are saying, oh, it's going to become commoditized. No bot, no company is going to want to pay more than 20,000 per year per bot. And that's just not that's just me, you know, again, what you've done is nuanced, right? Which is the first years, this is what it will be. But once it becomes ubiquitous, billions of bots, of course, the prices will all fall. But in the first years, you, it's demand driven, not, right? Not cost uh, plus. Yeah. And the assumption behind those criticisms are that all the bots are as equally as capable as any other bot. Yeah. And we're already seeing tremendous variability in the bots from all the different bot makers. Many of the bots don't yet even have hands. And so they will they will serve that that five dollar or seven fifty ten dollar part of nice. the market, yep. Right, and then a more fully capable robot like Optimus and perhaps Figure and others um, will serve the higher end of the market. So just like the labor pool today isn't just one big labor pool, right? You're not hiring doctors in warehouses, and you're not hiring warehouse workers to be surgeons, right? There's different. Mm -hmm different capabilities amongst the workforce and the same will also be true within the humanoid bot market. Well, oh, I really so like be this so much. Sorry.